next time you're on Jeopardy, you'll know that the most complete and best preserved juvenile T-Rex resides in Rockford, Illinois. About 66 million years ago was when she roamed the Earth, more or less the time that light from these distant galaxies began heading our way. Of course, if you want a good view of that light or anything else in the sky, you might pay a visit to the Rockford suburb of Chesney Park, where astrophysics makes powerful telescopes. Roland Christen founded astrophysics 30 years ago and still runs it today with his wife Marge, who also happens to be his ballroom dance partner. When they're not fond of doing, Roland and Marge guide their company in making several hundred telescopes a year for use by both professional astronomers and amateur sky watchers. From your first look at the night sky as a child, you know why stargazing goes back to the dawn of man. Only recently, though, have the tools given us a really good view. Is the telescope that took this photo here? One of the telescopes that took this photo is this big one here. Now, how far away is that? That is the Andromeda Galaxy. I believe it's two million light years away. So if you had a flashlight strong enough, as soon as you turn on, take two million years of that light from each year. I would just be kind of speechless. I, it's, I don't even know where to begin. From so far away, even the most colossal galaxy looks like only a tiny speck to the naked eye. So, in essence, what telescopes do is enlarge those specks the way microscopes magnify cells. Simply put, refracting telescopes are two lenses that line up properly. At the far end of the scope is the objective lens, which focuses diffuse light into a single point. That point of light hits the eyepiece, which turns it upside down and spreads it over the retina of your eye, covering your entire field of vision. That's not magic, it's optics. I made my first telescope out of a magnifying glass and a pair of spectacles. How old were you? I was 12 years old. Roland had been working at the optical giant Bosch at Lohm for four years when he had the foresight to strike out on his own. After converting his basement into a workshop, the business came into focus. First product was a star tracking device. A person could use a telescope to lock onto a star and then keep that telescope aimed at the star so that he could take a long time exposure of the sky. Roland and Marge were making telescopes full time by 1984. And not long after that, they outgrew their home headquarters. So they built this 22,000 square foot facility where today 18 employees hand make every telescope. So this is your kingdom back here, huh, Marge? <laughs> This is the machining department. Where do we start? Well, first step is the raw material. This would have started off as a chunk of aluminum. A solid piece? Solid piece. And it's put into the machine, and the first operation was to carve these cavities out. This is actually will end up being two parts here. There are hundreds of parts, each of which is custom machined out of aluminum. The next job is to deburr and smooth them getting them ready for their test assembly. If they don't all fit together precisely, the lenses won't be able to do their jobs properly. My job is to secure it, and then I... And not scratch it, I see. Right, to protect it. Uh, helios there. Yep. And the baffling is in here, which diffuses the light and helps keep it out of your eyepiece. It's like uh, little ski jumps for light. Right. Now, what do you call people who use an instrument like this? A telescoper? <laughs> what are you saying? Starry-eyed people. Starry-eyed people. When we come back to Made in America, astrophysics closes the distance between there and here. Then stay tuned for a first-class American success story, Tylenol. Welcome back to astrophysics, which puts the astro into physics, or it's the other way around. Galileo got his first enhanced peek at the heavens through a modest lens and a narrow tube. Needless to say, the technology has advanced quite a bit in 400 years. Telescopes today come with sophisticated mounts that help you find almost any plotted celestial body and track it as it appears to move. There is a keypad that you would hold in your hand that is basically a miniature computer, and it has all of the information that will allow your mount to find the object that you want. The only thing is you need initially to set up so that you're pointing north. Always at the North Star. Walter Pielokowski heads the company's electronics production. He accomplishes something that even Superman can't do. We're providing an instrument that's supposed to stop the rotation of the Earth. The planet's moving by gravity in space, just perfectly smooth. And 
we have to stop that motion so that we can look at something that stays put in your eyepiece. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like the cannon that they have on tanks. Tanks move it along like this, but that barrel stays exactly. You got it. So to do that with mechanical gears, everything has to be as precise as possible. Nothing that would register badly on that ammeter will be allowed to go out the door. I'll literally have to take it all apart again, put a new part in, test it all over again. Nothing goes out of here that's not perfect. Since the telescope is only as good as its lenses, the most important work of the factory takes place in the optical department. Ordinary window glass is quite green because it's loaded with impurities, whereas optical glass is extremely clear. It yeah, truly is. That's night and day. A curved generator grinds and edges the glass to size. Then comes lapping. Polishing is the same as lapping? Yes. It's a very fine powder which polishes when it's embedded in a particular type of tool made out of pine tar or pitch. Oh, no kidding. The pitch has very unique features in that an abrasive will sink into the pitch just high enough so that only the very tip shows, and then it oh, polishes sure. the glass beautifully. Measured against the test plate, the lens must be accurate to within one-tenth of a wave of green light. That translates to two millionths of an inch. This is the human hair here. That's a hair. And that little dot right there is 50 nanometers, which is the level that we need to achieve. All right. Okay. Finally, Roland stacks the lenses in the casing to an accuracy within one ten thousandth of an inch. That might take him five hours. So I have to remove all the dust in between the elements and clean it. After I get done with this, and I look through and there's any dust, I take it all apart again. Maybe that's where most <laughs> UFO reports came from, the specks of dust. So now we have a lens. We have the outside door open, and I'm going to show you how the lens forms an image on the wall of the light from outside. There it is. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. And by moving it back and forth, we can go in and out of focus now. So if somebody stood in that doorway, you would see him. There he is. So the stars were actually seeing upside down? Yes. They don't care. They don't care. Yeah. If you've never gotten excited by stargazing, this may seem like much to do about not much. But remember, a peek at the heavens is a window into faraway worlds and distant times. Oh, my God.